Finally, after almost 15 years of messing with cars, turning them inside and out, modifying this and that, I found one that's actually good out of the box. So this time around, I really wanted to try and simplify that formula and not go down that repetitive cycle of constantly just changing things for the sake of changing things. So for example, with the Lotus Exige, I thought that would be a car that I can just buy, it'd be good out of the factory, and I can just be happy with it. But once I got that car into my hands, I realized it was full of shortcomings that made me unhappy, which then eventually drove me down that rabbit hole of just changing everything. But that is not the case with this 993 C2S behind me. Porsche got this thing right, and that means I don't have to change that much to it. All I did was really personalize it a little bit, add a couple bolt-ons, and keep in the spirit of OEM Plus, because really, less is more. So I bought the car back around the end of May. I've been spending this whole time just dialing some detail items, and just with that, I can honestly say the car is pretty much done. So let me just go ahead and dive in and give you guys a walk around and show you all the items that are now installed on the car, and also why I think this epitomizes the uh, nature of OEM Plus, and also why I'm happy just leaving it as is. All right, so to start things off, let me begin with the basics. This is a 1998 Porsche 911, which is the very last year of the 993, and consequently also the very last year of air-cooled Porsches in general. And this is a Arctic Silver Metallic on black interior, and that was something I was very specific in wanting to get. Uh, this is also a C2S, which is a wide-body, rear-wheel drive only car. It is not all-wheel drive, and it's also not turbo. I think the previous owner, or the previous, previous owner, install some Bilstein PSS-10 coilovers. And since we're looking at the exterior, the front half of this car is actually completely PPF'd with Expel Ultimate Plus from the front bumper all the way back to the firewall, the front fenders, etc. So as we are looking at these wheels, these are the 18-inch technology package twist wheels. So the technology package actually makes them hollow spoke and they come in two variations. Hollow spoke, of course, like this one, which is lighter and the heavier, more prominent uh, solid spoke ones. And you can kind of distinguish between them by looking at the back side of the spokes. The, uh, what you call it, the solid spoke ones have an indent on the back of the spokes while the hollow spoke ones are just solid at the back. And since we are in this vicinity, although you cannot see it, the previous owner did change out the front lower control arm bushings to polyurethane versions because the factory rubber ones do go bad and then of course you get some vibrations and wobbles in your steering wheel. Another thing that the previous owner installed were LED taillights throughout the exterior, even the third brake light at the top that has LED bulbs inside, um, all the taillights of course, the blinkers, etc. He actually did not do the uh, license plate bulbs here, which I did myself. So the car has full LEDs on the outside. I kept the inside non-LED, not sure why. I think I just want more of a uh, warmer tone on the inside, I guess, to get that more period correct look on the inside. I don't know. I'm kind of conflicted. I might change those out to LEDs later on. Who knows? Um, and of course, the headlights are actually HIDs up here. And this car actually does have the wider stainless steel oval exhaust tips. I believe it came packaged originally. If you had to buy these tips separately after market or through the dealer, uh, I think they're about 600 bucks. So I'm glad that is with the car already. And honestly, I think the biggest draw for me uh, for this particular car are these seats. These are the OEM Sport hardbacks. And the previous owner also paint matched the backs of these seats, which is amazing. And that was a huge, again, draw for me for the car. I think these seats and of course the coilovers were the two main things I really liked. Um, and these seats in particular cost a small fortune. So I'm glad I don't have to go through the whole trouble of getting these myself in the aftermarket. Uh, and they do make replicas or I think reproduction versions of these, which are a uh, little bit different and of course not as sought after but these ones are indeed oem leather 
and OEM all the way through. Well, let's just spend another moment or two taking a look at the paint matched hardbacks of these seats. Arctic silver, what a nice touch. And you can see, of course, from the back of the car as well. It's a really good look. And while I have the seat folded forward, you can see down here on this tray is a cup holder that the previous owner installed. And the cup holder in this thing up here is uh, leather wrapped. And the last thing that I think he really installed was this Renline uh, phone holder right here, which is actually really useful. Just get a magnet on your phone and just stick it right there. You're good to go. Okay, now let's talk about the stuff that I've done over the past roughly half year. So beginning up here in the front bumper, I changed out the uh, fog lights with these Turbo S ducts with LED uh, lights. So that is what that looks like. And of course I had to paint match it multiple times to get the match and paint quality to come out as it looks here. That was a pain to paint that you know what. The car came with some clear corners installed but I actually reverted them back to these OEM ambers because I'm trying to go for that period correct look. And I just like a splash of color I think on the exterior. It was just way too monochrome which is like silver and black basically. So I personally like the way these ambers look more. So that is all good to go. Let me know what you guys think of the ambers versus like a clear corner. Okay, so I teleported to this side of the car for some reason, but the biggest detail item that I did that made the biggest visual difference as well, and of course uh, a performance difference, is I lowered the car to a proper ride height, like it sits right here, and I had a corner balance and a line. You can see there is no real fender gap or finger gap between the tire and the fender itself and the ride height adjustment and corner balancing alignment was just the first leg in this entire i guess uh, wheel fitment and suspension tuning saga the next thing that i did was i actually installed msi extended studs in the front because i needed to space out the front wheels some more so the fronts have h r spacers those are 15 millimeters in the front you can see the uh, fitment is way better it was like a sunken battleship from the factory and then the back has a seven millimeter spacer and that is also fairly equally flush. And I'm actually really happy with this fitment. I mean, I'm not going for the whole Stance Nation roll fender type of look anymore or the super stretch tires, but I just need to fill out the uh, fender wells properly. I think like this, and that is good enough. And of course the back also has extended bullet nose studs installed as well. Not sure if you can pick that up. And in the process of installing the back studs, you have to completely take apart the parking brake and springs and shoes. So since that had to come out anyway, I just bought brand new uh, shoes and springs from the dealer and put that in as well. But let me go back to talking about the suspension and wheel fitment, uh, I guess, chapter. I'm not quite done with that just yet. These tires, these Michelin Impala Sport 2s, these are brand new tires I installed. I had to make the tough decision to rip out the previous Continental Extreme Contacts that came with the car for these Michelins. But one of the nice payoffs that I got from taking the plunge with these Michelins is the sidewalls that I get are much better than the Continentals. The Contis had a very blocky sidewall and I was actually getting some rubbing issues with these same seven millimeters that I have on the car. But as soon as I went to these Michelins, they were gone. And plus the car came with Michelins from the factory. So I'm really just trying to go for that factory OEM plus type of uh, feel and spirit, I guess, right? Keeping authentic to that. Oh, and one more thing that's also part of the suspension. I installed some Elfin Racing bump steer tie rods up front and some Roth Sport polyurethane steering rack bushings. So coming around to the back, you can't see it because all you see on the car are just these exhaust tips. But behind them, I have some Fister 3 Sport exhaust mufflers installed. And that is all I did for the exhaust system, which is another uncanny change in my, I guess, portfolio because typically I would do the entire exhaust system. But I really didn't want to uh, compromise just the drivability and everyday use of this car by like taking out the cats, having a really smelly car, or having drone issues, etc. So I want to keep the formula simple again, and just going to the Fisser 3s, that is the perfect balance of the right exhaust noise, and also not being overly loud. And honestly, that is pretty much it in terms of the mods that you can kind of see from the outside. I mean, I think this is pretty much done. There's nothing else I can really do to it. I'm not going to add a spoiler. I don't want to ruin this nice sloped 911 quintessential line on the back. Uh, I'm not going to add a lip in the front. Listen, man, not to be cheesy or anything, but imagine you had a beautiful girl, but she had like a face tattoo. Same thing with this. You don't want it to overdo things. You don't want to put a face tattoo on a beautiful car like this. Um, maybe you can do some dreads or whatever you're into, but nothing more than that. You know what I mean? Okay, my friends, let's go ahead and hop inside the interior again and talk about the things that I did inside here. Starting with these damn overpriced stainless steel OEM door sills. Man, these were a pain in the ass. I first had some uh, reproduction ones made in the UK 
which are actually fairly close, but has some fitment issues with them. Like there's like a gap back here or something like that when I first installed them. So I actually ripped them out, threw them in the garbage can, dug out my wallet, ate ramen noodles for like five months, and then bought these OEM ones directly from the dealer. These are $900 pieces of stainless steel that I cannot believe they cost 900 bucks. Now let's drop down a level here and take a look at the pedal box area. So I got some Renline goodies here. I have some Renline uh, pedals. That is a Renline, did I say Renline? Renline pedals, a Renline adjustable gas pedal over there. Uh, that is a Renline floorboard and that's pretty much it. I got everything in black with a little bit of uh, red for some accents. They do sell a dead pedal, but I opted not to install that because, I mean, I want to retain this nice patch of rubber or leather, whatever that is. And plus you have to drill into the body of the car to install the dead pedal. Didn't want to do that. Same thing for the passenger side. They make a red line uh, perforated floorboard for the passenger side to match. Opted not to do that either. Just trying to keep things simple and just add touches wherever it's only necessary. And now you might be asking, what is this floor mat? This is actually wool, feels super soft. Very primo, it's damn thick as well. It's like almost half an inch thick or something. But nice rubberized bottom right there. You can kind of see that. So this is from Coco Mat. I had to get this thing custom trimmed two times. This is the second revision. There's actually a third revision in the works as we speak. Just to kind of tighten up things a little bit better here. I'm going to shorten this leading edge as well. I'm going to move that seam to the back side. And moving up a little bit, we have a Renline ignition switch bezel just to add a little bit of accent again. And the big one really is going to be the steering wheel. This is a 9 and 6 three-spoke steering wheel that I had completely reupholstered in the same matching black leather as the factory wheel. The same stitching pattern as well. Everything is exactly like the factory. However, this steering wheel is thicker in girth than the factory one. You can't really see it like visually, but you can definitely feel it. So the most common way to thicken these steering wheels is to add padding. But what that does is it makes it very soft and cushy and you have a lot of give when you're holding the wheel. So what my guy did was he actually thickened this wheel by adding suede underneath the leather. So it's very firm, there's no give, it doesn't roll around under your hands, it feels great. This airbag section was rewrapped in leather as well with a French seam and it also has embossing for the horn buttons and the airbag logo. Okay, and the last major item that I added to the car was this Gen 3 CarPlay Porsche Classic uh, radio. So bought this thing directly from the dealer Put it in, Bluetooth works, looks great. I mean, look at this thing. This is the radio. That's the climate control panel. Look at that match. So that will do it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. I know these 993s are a little bit out of touch to the masses. They're not exactly mainstream, but I can say, and I can also recommend out of all the cars that I've owned, this is the one to get. It's already my personal favorite, even during my brief ownership. There's just something special about it. It's just like the whole package, how it comes together how it's uh, fun to drive, easy to maintain, you just get in and go, don't have to worry about anything, etc. The whole package is there, right? There's no compromises with a Porsche 911 like this one. So really when they say Porsche, there is no substitute. Uh, there's a lot of truth to that, honestly. And I'm not just being a shill because I have the car now, but you know, I've always wanted one of these since like back in 2012. I made the wrong choice and I bought an RX-7 instead. I still regret that, but I think I finally atoned for that misstep with this one. So if I could recommend something, it is to just jump ahead, get to your end game a little bit faster, and just get something that you can see yourself in 10 years from now. And I can still see myself 10 years from now in this car, for example.